Well, hey there, friendships. Welcome back to Curtis's Corner. If you're new here, hi, I'm Curtis. This is my corner. And on today's special makeup corner, we are going to have a long, long video today because I have received some messages from some people who have been wanting this. I haven't done one in a very long time. So we are going to do a full step by step makeup tutorial for those who have no idea how to do anything. And this is going to be here to teach you. Uh, I will also format this into YouTube shorts as well as short form content on other platforms as well. But be sure to grab a snack, get nice and comfy and cozy, buckle up for the adventure we're about to go on to change this into something more magical. <laughs> Stay tuned. So before we jump into things, just be sure to like this video. I would really appreciate it if you like this video. It just lets me know that you are liking the content that I am putting out for you. Along with that, please make sure you're hitting that big red subscribe button. It helps me out. It helps you out. It helps everyone in the world out. So subscribe, ring the notification bell. That way you're knowing when I'm posting videos. In the link below, you can go and check out my Patreon. It is the lowest price I can physically make it for you because times are tough and they're only getting tougher. I made sure to make it as low as possible for you. Super affordable. Check it out. You will get the complete unedited version of this video. And yeah, a little behind the scenes, behind the magic, if you will, seeing everything before it goes out on YouTube. So you're getting early access and you're getting unedited, full, raw, video all the mistakes all the random talking to myself all the fun stuff that you never get to see on the screen furthermore you also get creative control over my content be it for my movie mondays or my makeup corner content you get to decide what type of videos i am putting out on those days and if that interests you again link below but without further ado let's jump into the video so you can see me turn from this to this and here we go. So first things first, before you do anything, you want to make sure your skin is moisturized. You cleanse, you tone if you want to tone, you add some serums if you want to add serums, you moisturize your face and you let it sit for like at least five minutes to soak up all into your skin. I've already done that. I have already moisturized everything. Here's hoping my skin actually cooperates now. <laughs> Next step is you're going to want to get a primer. Now a primer is something that you put on at the very beginning. It is there to prime your face for the products you're about to put onto it. Think of it like painting a wall. You wanna put a primer on to make everything kind of smooth, one color, one kind of note, one texture, in order to apply the paint as best as possible. Same thing goes with this. So my favorite things are something that's hydrating, something that's pore minimizing, something that's sticky because it's going to really grip onto the products. So the one I'm going into is the Rare Beauty Pore Diffusing Primer. This one, it's a little more silicone based Base. It's not as sticky as like the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. That's another favorite of mine. That one is hydrating and very sticky. So it's going to adhere all the makeup to it. This one, this is just going to blur the pores as if it's going to give you doll-like skin, which is wonderful. And it's not super silicone-y. So you're going to do about like two or three pumps, mush it together on your fingers, and you're just going to kind of pat it around your T-zone area. So that way everything is all blurred and any excess you want to just kind of like push it around the rest of your skin there but you want to really focus it around the nose the cheeks or uh, like under the eye and then the center of your forehead and then again just whatever is left over just push it up and out once that's all done kind of just pat around just to really kind of like sink it in to your skin here and once you feel like it feels like it's all evenly coated you're ready for the next step and that step my friends is foundation now i have a couple foundations in here that i like to use i have a full coverage foundation and i have a skin tint type of foundation now most foundations you're going to have to shake to mix up all the product because the pigment and the oil and the water and just every ingredient tends to separate so 
you just want to make sure you're shaking it up. I think today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with a skin tint today. A skin tint, because it is more of a water-based type of product, you are going to get more hydration added to your skin. So if you have drier skin, a skin tint is probably very good for you. And the Morphe 2 skin tint, I find, is a light to medium coverage, depending on how you're applying it and then how much you want to go over it. So I'm just going to jump in with my Jacqueline and Morphe brush set here. Can I call you Jackie? I'm doing it anyway. So Jackie, we love your brushes. I'm going to go in. This is on a JH03 brush. It's a foundation brush. It's like dome-like. It is flat at the same time as you can see. So what I like to do is I don't have the mirror and I'm kind of sad. Mm, fitting on it. That's okay. I like to go on immediately onto my face with this stuff because I find that's how I get the most coverage. I feel like it's the best way to apply it. So I'm just going to add some drippies right there and I'm just going to dab with a brush. A brush is going to give you more coverage than a beauty sponge will. If you like a little sheer coverage, go ahead, use a sponge. It does tend to soak up some product but a brush is going to distribute it a lot more. You can even, if you don't want to go directly on the face, put it right onto the brush, just like that. And then you can, again, just go over all the areas of your face. One good thing to remember when you're doing this as well, my beard's a little crooked, oh well. When you're doing this, when you're going for your nose, don't use a lot of product on your nose. That's how it's gonna look cakey. And the nose is one of the parts that breaks up the quickest and becomes super obvious that you are wearing any makeup. So to avoid that, make sure you're putting the product all over your cheeks first. And then whatever's kind of left over is what you bring onto the nose. So I'm just gonna get the forehead here. Again, I'm just using still padding motions all the time because we don't want any streaks from the bristles of the brush. So just keep going, pat, 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 as Kira likes to go, pew, 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 pew. So we're just gonna pew, pew, pew it all over. I can see my nose is gonna be some trouble today. It's okay, sometimes that happens, it happens. My nose did not decide it wanted to take the moisturizer that I put on today, so she's just gonna be rude. Now, the best, I will say the best thing to use on the nose is a beauty sponge. So now that I've applied it with a brush, I'm just gonna lightly go around and dab it with the sponge. It will soak up anything left over that doesn't really need to be on the skin and it will get rid of any possible brush strokes that have appeared that you don't really want there at all in any sense of the word. So just pitter pat it all over. This will make it look more skin-like merge in. I don't really need to go down my neck that much because this is basically the exact match of my skin tone. So I'm fine. I mean, I could cover that up a little bit, dull the redness around, but I don't really need to do anything. Like, you see, there wasn't any change really. So that's that. Foundation is now all on, okay? Your next thing that we're going to do after applying your foundation, we are going Oh, we're gonna go in with a concealer. Now, the thing about concealer is it all depends on what kind of an effect you want to go for. If you want a natural look, you're going to get a concealer that matches your skin tone. It'll just even everything out. If you want a more brightening look, then you're going to get one that is a bit lighter in tone than your actual complexion. This one here is a little, it's slightly lighter, but like it's very, very similar to my skin tone. So that's what I'm gonna do. You put a little bit, almost like as if you're drawing a diagonal A right in the corner here. And then you wanna put a little bit going up like that. When you put an angle going up at the end of your eye, that is going to make it look a little sharper, a little more defined. So again, two ways to apply this. You can use a brush. A brush is going to give you more of a full coverage effect, or you can use the sponge, which is going to shear it out slightly. Right now, I'm gonna go in with a brush and it's always gonna be a tapping motion. For an even fuller coverage, let the concealer sit for a little bit and then you can tap it out. Start from the inner and go out towards the outer and bring it back in and just keep patting, patting, patting. When you do that, everything goes out, everything blends, everything looks wonderful in the end. And there we go, no more circles. This is a more natural concealer, it's not full coverage. Obviously, if you want full coverage, you go for the ones that are meant to be full coverage, <laughs> obviously. So again, I'm just gonna repeat it, make that diagonal kind of A shape and then 
angled going up so that way everything kind of goes angled and snatched upwards like it's being pulled up let it sit for a couple seconds get a fuller coverage <sighs> how are you great now that we've let it sit for a little bit you can let it sit for longer i'm not going to because i don't want this to be a 12 hour video we're just going to pat it all out and again just pat we're not going to do any swiping if you swipe you're going to move everything underneath we don't want to disturb any of the product that we laid down beforehand so we're just going to pat 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 until everything is all blended just like that so that is that that is all of our liquid products we're going to use today we can do a different video another time for creams and liquids because i have a cream blush i've got a liquid blush i've got cream bronzers all that stuff but we're not going to go into that we're going to keep it super simple today and now we're going to set the face so in order to set the face you need a setting powder now there are multiple kinds of setting powder there's super finely milled which means the powder is going to be very thin very lightweight where it's feeling like nothing there's brightening powders there is a luminous powder there is a mattifying powder uh this one is a luminous powder because i have drier skin so i don't want to emphasize drier skin if something is matte and you have dry skin do not use it unless you are extremely 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 moisturized and you can guarantee no dry patches will appear on your face that is the only time that you should be using a matte powder if you have dry skin i have not found a moisturizer that works well for me i have gone through moisturizer after moisturizer after moisturizer and they all irritate me and i don't mean irritate me like i get a skin irritation i mean nothing tends to work so i'm irritated <laughs> so so i'm going to go in with the jeffrey star cosmetics luminous translucent star powder it smells like cotton candy it's delicious oh, i'm annoyed Oh, I'm annoyed. Sorry, took a little bit of a break. Didn't continue on, I promise. <laughs> I was just looking for this. I couldn't find things. So, your powder. <laughs> <laughs> with a powder you want to make sure everything is blended out nicely so that way there's no creasing or anything like that my eyes always crease it's a, a thing it does it's a thing that a lot of people eyes are going to do so what you want to do is you're going to want to get like a small dome brush this is the jh07 and what you're going to do is i'm just going to go over quickly again um just to make sure everything is blended when everything is all blended out nicely like that you're going to take the brush dip it in the powder tap off a little bit of the extra and you're just gonna powder it stamp powder all over the areas that you want to set now again if you're not super moisturized it is going to pick it up powders luminous not luminous doesn't matter it's still going to pick them up luminous is just going to pick it up less but it still does pick up dry skin. My nose is going crazy right now, and I'm not very pleased with it, but there's not much that I can do. I've tried moisturizing. If anyone knows of a really good moisturizer to use, please let me know, because I've tried CeraVe, I've tried Cetaphil, I've tried Jeffree Star, I have tried, oh, Sal de Janeiro, I have tried, oh, what is that one? The Dewy Skin, Tatcha. I've tried Tatcha, I, not, not Nothing, nothing works. Not a singular brand works for me. And it drives me quite insane. All right. So again, I'm just going, oh, there is something touching me and I'm not a fan. I'm just going to quickly pounce this out here. I forgot more areas. So what I'm actually going to do is now that I've set it, I'm going to bake it slightly just to kind of improve the brightness of it. So I'm going to get a little more powder and I'm just going to really tap on the sides here and tap underneath. Okay, and we're not gonna do anything. It's just gonna be, that's it. You're just gonna pat it all on if you want. You don't have to do this. I'm going to, I'm choosing to. I haven't done a bake in a long time. This is what's called baking because you're like letting it sit there and not do anything. So you're just kind of letting it bake underneath and soak everything in. So that's what I'm doing. Again, this is completely optional if you don't want to. This will tend to enhance a little bit more of the drier skin. However, while that being a con, a pro with this is that any eyeshadow that you're going to plan on doing, that wasn't a proper sentence. Any eyeshadow look that you plan on doing, it's going to catch all the fallout here. If there's any, you can wipe it away and nothing will stick in theory to the base that you put on. Continuing on, we're gonna go back into the concealer now. I'm going to apply some right down the center of my nose here. This adds a little bit more coverage if you're using 
a brighter concealer, then you're just gonna like shrink the face in, draw attention to the center of the face, which is, again, another good thing about the brighter concealer. I'm just gonna do this and then use this powder to kind of concentrate around because then that will also help um, brighten things up as well. So again, I'm just patting, pouncing it in, getting more coverage going for me. Now that I've laid that all down, go back in with a powder and we're just gonna really focus it in areas so I can really set it into place. A little bit less so that way it's on the nose here but just less on the nose so that way it's not emphasizing too too much. And then everything else we're just gonna kind of do like a circular type of motion and we're just gonna coat the whole face in this powder. This will set all your creams, your liquids, all that fun stuff into place. And keep it there for a while. Just what we want. We don't want our makeup going anywhere, do we? No, no we do not. Who wants makeup traveling around? I know I don't. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're here for. We're living for it and we're done. So while this is baking, what we're going to do next is eyebrows. You're gonna take a pencil, okay? Pencil, always pencil, not pen, pencil. You're gonna start by lining the bottom portion of your brow by raising your eyebrows up and just kind of following the base. When you get to about halfway, making sure that like the first part of your brow needs to kind of line up with the side of your nose here, which mine almost does. I just gotta extend it a little bit more to about there. That's where my brow should start. The end should be from the end of your nose here, corner of your nose, to the end of your eyeball, which it does. So I'm just going to make sure that that stays there. And then the arch of your brow needs to go from the corner of your nose, kind of through your eyeball, which when you're looking sideways, it does. So my brows are perfect as they are, the shape wise anyways. So I'm just gonna follow mine. You may need to do something with yours, but you're just gonna follow it. And then when you get to the tail, you can make the tail a little darker. You need to make it longer, you make it a little longer. And you're basically just going to kind of fill in that tail and again line the top you can make it more of a like pointed arch if you want you can make it more of a curved arch and what you're just going to fill in everything not too much you want to just kind of fill in the gaps where maybe you're missing a little bit of hair just to make it a little more full nothing crazy this is going to go crazy a little bit i always get my eyebrows to go crazy and then i end up fixing them and they're magical i'm going to do one on camera one off camera you'll see what i mean by the end but the first one that's going crazy right now after you're all done kind of tracing and filling in you're going to take a gel you can use a tinted one this one is tinted you don't need to you can use like a, a, a normal clear gel if you want. This is just to really spread around the uh, pencil that you've used and to really glue the hairs down. You're just gonna go and then anything that kind of gets out of the area of your brows, you're just gonna clean it up with a little bit of concealer. And to do that, you're going to need a nice flat brush. I'm first going to kind of pat this out, maybe do a little light sweep with my finger just to really help kind of angle it. I'm not pushing hard or anything. I'm strictly just following the shape of the brow that I'm trying to do, very lightly gliding my finger across and then going in with a concealer. We're just gonna go take it on the back of the hand. That's where you're gonna put it. And then with a nice little flat brush, you're just gonna go in and you're going to trace kind of the bottom portion. So that way it will blend nicely up. This will allow the shape that you want to appear. And then once you're happy with how you've, as we call it, carved out the bottom portion, you're going to want to kind of blend downwards. So everything is all seamless and it will blend in with the eye that we're going to end up covering up anyways. As for the top portion, it's gonna be the same thing. You're just going to carve it along the top nicely, slowly, gently, until everything looks the way you want it to look, and then just lightly blend it all out. Boom, eyebrow all 
complete. I'm going to do the other eye off camera now. And when I'm back, we'll get into some eyeshadow. Keep on watching. Okay, so eyebrows are now all complete. Everything is on, everything looks great. What we're going to do now is we're gonna jump into the eyes. We're just gonna do a nice neutral look today. And today's palette I'm going in with is the Jaclyn Hill and Morphe Collection Divine Neutrals. This is super pretty. I have never before used this palette. So I'm excited to try this out. So what you're going to do first is <laughs> On a nice fluffy brush, this is the JH35. I'm going to go in, because we've used concealer, that's going to prime our eyes. We primed our face for foundation, and we prime our eyes for eyeshadow. I'm going to go into the shade that's called Just Barely. It is a very light nude shade. This is going to go in the crease. Now, the crease area of your eye is like that little pocket. But what you want to do is don't put it directly into the crease, especially if you have a hooded eyes like me, you want to bring it up higher. So you're going to kind of like look to see if you look up and then you look down, it's where the fold happens. So right here is mine. I'm going to put it higher. So I'm going to put it right here, right above that fold. You're just going to take it, tap a little bit off, and you're just going to stamp stamp it like we've been stamping everything with brushes we're stamping so the front part of the shadow should be touching or part of your shadow should be touching the front part of your brow leaving all of this part the arch completely empty this is what's going to give you a really nice um, shade and after you end up putting it on then you can swipe it back and forth almost like windshield wipers and don't be afraid to like swirl it into the brow if you need to it's just going to add more. You're gonna swirl it back and forth. Again, leaving that arch completely empty and untouched because we're gonna add a little something something there later. Just back and forth, same thing, other eye, same placement. So you're basically bringing it right where the eyebrow is kind of touching at the front here and then leaving that arch completely, completely empty. You don't want to fill that in. Bring it up into the front of the brow and just back and Take your time with this. You can't over blend. The more you blend, the like better it's going to look. We're just kind of creating this like shadowy effect on the eye to give us some good shape, good dimension. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over to the shade next door. It's called Good Vibes. It's slightly darker. Same brush. Going to put that on, tap it off, and we're just going to go a little bit, like ever so slightly lower. So if we put it here, we're going to go here. And this is going to go right there just to enhance the look give it a little more dimension a little more warmth that's what this is gonna do and it's just gonna really really nicely add a good shade to the eye to work with we're gonna do about three to four layers of that i managed to get it in three if you need to take four then you do four boo it's up to you how many you want to do i would say no more than four three should be really good and that's to get like a really good payoff Good pigmentation, good blendability of it all. Okay, tap it off, go back into that just barely shade one more time, and you're just gonna kind of marry the two shades together. Okay, again, don't touch that arch area. We're just marrying the two shades together, blending it all out completely so everything looks nice, blended, blurred, and pretty. Once you have everything blended out, we're gonna go and get a slightly smaller, more accurate brush. And the one that I'm going to use, I'm gonna use a JH37. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna go in to the shade Boo Bear and Booked, a mixture of those two, these ones right here. Those are the two I'm gonna go back and forth in just a couple times. This is gonna go onto the outer corner of the eye. Choose what looks best for you or choose whatever you're in the mood for. If you wanna kinda of do more of a wing outlook then make sure that you're doing it as like a V where you kind of go up this way and go in this way to the crease area if you want to do a more rounded look then you just kind of center it and blow it out as you go I think today I kind of want to do a more rounded look so I'm just going to stamp it here first bring it in to that first little pocket back and then I'm just going to get it like that really tap it off again and just swirl just swirl it and you're gonna keep swirling it look up like head up look down hold the mirror below you so that way you get more eyesight of your eye you get more room and just kind of follow your eye shape that's essentially all you're doing and whatever is left after you're done blending swoop it swoop it onto the lid swoop it onto the crease 
and then go back. And then go back in with that first brush again to that just barely shade, and we're just gonna haze. We're just gonna add a little bit of a haze all around. Again, it's all to blend everything together like that. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly do this on the other side. But remember, the more you blend, the better the look is going to look. We've got that out. Now, it depends how pigmented something you want it to look. I feel like I wanna go for a subtler look today. So I'm gonna go in with a dry, flat brush. This is the JH41. If I want more uh, pigmentation happening, more payoff, I'm gonna spray it, or I'm gonna go in with my finger, but I don't want a big pow of anything today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with the shade Birthday Suit. That's this gold shade right here. I'm just gonna coat the brush in this, tap a little bit of the excess off, and this is just gonna go all over the lid. You're basically just going to paint it all on. Paint, 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 paint. You're gonna bring it up to the crease, and because I have hooded eyes, I'm going to bring it actually slightly above the crease, but I'm going to paint it to the crease first, just to make sure I have the whole lid covered, and then I'm going to correct as I go. You're gonna bring it around, make sure it's touching that dark brown that we put on the outer, because then we're gonna go back in with it, blend it all together after. Let's see how this is just like a nice little boop of color. That is, that's what we want. Nothing too crazy. And I'm going to go again, like I said, just a little bit more above where the crease actually is so that when I look straight on, I'm able to still see everything and we'll tone it down. So don't you worry about any of that. Another thing to do is look straight ahead so that way you can see kind of like where you'll be able to see. And that's kind of what you want to cover. Like I'm looking straight ahead, you can see the gold that I'm putting on, which is perfect because that's what I want. I want you to be able to see the gold. I'm gonna go in with a mixture of good vibes and just barely really tap it off. And we're just going to blend, blend it just above that gold area to make sure everything looks flawless. Go back in with Boo Bear and Booked, really tap it off and just circular motion going into the gold shimmer that we placed on the lid because that's the best way I find to blend. Rather than going from gold to brown, we go brown to gold, and then going over that again with just barely and good vibes, just to blend everything out. Repeat it on the other side, on the other eye. And I think today, I think today I'm going to leave the lower lash bare today. I don't feel like doing a lower lash today. So we're gonna just coat the whole lid, and then we can pick it up from there after. Coated. Now I look okay. This is where I need to be. Take your time getting everything shaded in, painted in, just you name it. Just in. Everything needs to be in. Okay. Again, first two colors. Blend out the edge so it's not as harsh. Blend out this part so it's blended nicely with the two colors. And then blend that out again so everything is cohesive. And nice. Eyes are all finished. So what I'm going to do is, with a nice big fluffy brush, I'm going to just sweep away all of that white powder that was just sitting on my face, nice and gently, because we are done. We're done with the lid, we're done with the eye, aside from one shade, which I'll do in a minute. But everything is now brighter, looks great, looks heavenly, we're good to go. So the last part of the eye that we're gonna do, I'm gonna get, you can either get a small flat, you can get a rounded pencil like this. I'm gonna go into the shade Chic Happens, that's this very pale shade there, and I'm just gonna put this right into the inner corner as a bit of like a, a, a pop of brightness, right in there, just like that. And it's a perfect shade to go well with all of this because it just kind of melts into all the colors that we've put on and doesn't really overtake anything in a bad way at all. And just very lightly blend. Inner corner is now popped open, nice and highlighted. Boom. Bronzer time. I always like starting with a bronzer. Bronzer's wonderful. I'm gonna go in with the Charlotte Tilbury. Make sure your bronzer is not too warm, that it's orange, not too cool, that it's gray, not too yellow, none of that. We don't want any of that. You're gonna get a giant flat slash dome brush. It looks like this. It's kind of flat, but also a dome. That is a good bronzing brush. And you're just gonna tap, tap, tap in there, tap it off. And now where your kind of like if you touch your cheeks, you can feel your cheekbone here. You're gonna go slightly underneath, just like right here. 
rule of thumb, it's kind of like at the top going down towards the corner of your mouth. That's kind of where you want to place bronzer. And then we're going to blend this all out after. We're going to put it on the temples. Okay, just kind of stamp it on. We're going to put it along the hairline of the front because that's going to give us our color. You basically want to apply it wherever you would naturally kind of get like a suntan. And we're going to contour slightly underneath the jaw here. Kind of start behind the ear and just go down all the jawline. And once you've done that, this is also going to be blended down to kind of match the shade that we're kind of going for now. Once you've done that, kind of take off the excess of your brush and you're just going to blend it out. I like to kind of pounce it. That way it goes well. You're not disrupting anything underneath. Just pounce it until your arm hurts and then keep going. That's essentially what you're doing. You basically want to go until your arm hurts and then keep doing it. If you think you need more, add some more, but it all depends on the type of bronzer you're using because some are way more pigmented than others and not all work the same. With a smaller fluffy brush, I'm going to, I'm just going to take a little bit of this as well, really tap it off because I don't want it too much and just go down the nose here. Tie it right into the eyebrow. Just really go down the side of the nose. You want to make it like tan, skinny, all that fun stuff. Right, then go over it with your dry brush you use for powder. Just kind of soften everything up. And that's your bronzer, friend. Blush time! With blush, I'm going to go into the Moon Prism Blush Palette by Lunar Beauty. And I'm going to be using an angled brush. Now, you can use any kind of brush. I have two angled brush. This is a more dense one. This is a more fluffy one. Um, the dense one is going to obviously give you more pigment, whereas the fluffy one is going to give you less pigment. I want to go in with the fluffy. And I'm going to go in with a mixture of the shade Pink Moon and Twilight. So Pink Moon is this one, Twilight is the one right beside it, kind of like a corally shade. I'm just gonna go back and forth, tap off, and just, if you smile, you can see kind of where it gets like squishy. That is called the apple of your cheek, and you're gonna place it there and sweep upwards, okay? And then sweep upwards. It's gonna give you this nice glow from within kind of look, at least with this palette. It, beautiful and a blush that takes a little bit of time to layer up is perfection that's what this one is it has good pigment but with the right brushes you can not go in heavy-handed and you build it up and it looks beautiful after so after you've done the cheeks go in a little bit around the temples as well just to kind of add a little more pink hue if you want this is this is optional you can just keep it centered i'm also going to add some to my nose i like a little red little color to the tip of my nose just a smidge a little bit on the chinny chin but nothing too crazy that's literally the blush literally all done now we've used a lot of powder we're going to go in with a setting spray i'm going to remove this Basically what you're gonna do is you're going to take the setting spray, you're just gonna soak your face until it's dripping. Bitch, I told you, until it's dripping. <laughs> ever, ever, ever so lightly, you're going to take a sponge and you're going to extremely lightly tap it on your face and it's going to blend all of those powders together. And I mean like, as soon as you come in contact with your skin, take the entirety of the sponge off. You are just constantly patting. You are never letting it sit. You are not letting it soak really any of the product up. It is strictly pressing all of the product into your skin to give you a flawless looking base. Me, not so much because my dry skin is awful. I should have mentioned, I apologize for not mentioning, I should have mentioned. If your lips are dry, if your lips are crusty at the start of this, add a lip oil. If you add a lip oil to your lips, it's going to hydrate your lips by the time you go and do the lipstick portion. But we're jumping ahead of ourselves now. It's time for highlights. 
Some people like a, you know, more lifelike highlight. Some people like a blinding highlight where you can see your face from space. I'm one of those people. So I'm gonna go in with the Michaela X Glam Light Highlighter. That's what she looks like right there. Stunning. Stunning. I'm going to go in on a large like dome kind of applicator. It looks like this. It's called the JH09. It's very much, think of it like a giant eyeshadow brush. That's essentially what it looks like. I'm gonna swirl it around, give it a little tap. And so if you put your bronzer here and your blush here, even higher is where your highlighter is gonna go. And you're gonna swing it around. And this is where you're going to put the highlighter underneath that arch. So it's almost like a backward C on your right eye and then a regular C on your left eye. Looking in the mirror. When you're looking in the mirror, it's a regular C. Now, the more that you use highlighter, especially a powder highlighter, the more texture is going to be shown on your skin. If you don't like it, use less, okay? I like blending, so I like layering. I don't care if my texture shows. After you apply it on the cheek and the eyebrow arch, above the eyebrow, give it a little squiggle. Just a light little squiggle above your arch because then that's gonna draw some attention to that area. It makes it kind of look like you're sweating, but without sweating. You're gonna go down the center of your nose, right down the bridge. <laughs> Not all the way, okay? You want to kind of like stop just before like the ball of your nose and like where the crease is. So like from here to here, that's where you're gonna go to highlight. It's a nice short little boop, 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 boop. If it ends up being too much, you can always tap it out a little bit, take a little bit more, put it on the tip of your nose. And again, same thing, just tap it out it blends it it makes it look nicer and then last part right where kind of like the m part it's called the cupid's bow of your lip that's where you're gonna put some extra because we want it to look like you made a metal and that's the highlighting portion so now that we have all of that on it is time to do our lips i like doing a lip where it is a darker liner and a lighter shade on the lips I think it looks pretty. I think it looks cute. She's fun and beautiful. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go in with a Rare Beauty Kind Words Matte Lip Liner in the shade Wise, along with her lipstick in the shade Creative. So first things first, we're gonna go in with the liner. Now with the liner, you're gonna take your time. If you wanna do an overlined look, I'm gonna try and do that today. You don't wanna overline the whole lip. We're not Trixie Mattel. <laughs> it's fun to do it every now and then, but if you want that natural kind of like pillowy lip, all you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of go slightly over the Cupid's bow, okay? So you're just gonna, mm, and then you're just gonna draw it so it's slightly above each point and you're gonna connect them. Like that. Then you're gonna just follow the rest of your actual lip line all the way down. So that's the top lip all done. Same thing with your bottom. Oh my goodness. Same thing with the bottom lip. You can underline it slightly, but then follow. Okay, you're gonna mess up a few times. I still mess up. We can fix it though, because of our good friend, conceal it. So again, back of the hand. Very, very easy to mess up. I've seen like Manny MUA, James Charles, they've had to correct their lips as well. So it's like, if you have to, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. Done, look at that, look at that. Easy peasy, lemon squeeze me. Now that we've lined, we're gonna go in with the lipstick. And then you can take a little brush, little brush, and just blend everything out. Just go nice and light, and there we go. Lips are all done, they look stunning. And then you can just add a gloss, any type of gloss, whatever you think will look pretty. I'm gonna use this one, this Lunar Beauty. It's beautiful, mm -hmm. so nice. Okay, that's lips, eyeliner time. I'm gonna use a liquid liner. 
this is scary to some you don't want to you can always use a black shadow and a flat like and i mean flat 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 brush like Ooh, something like this a jh43 if you use something like this you can also get away with it i've come a long way so i know ish how I'm, what i'm doing you're just going to line as close as you can to your lashes take your time don't go crazy just go slow slow and steady you know always win the race and if you want to only do the line across do it if you're feeling adventurous if you want to try and do a wing go ahead you don't have to if you don't want to a wing is definitely tricky to do because you have to get them even on both sides which in and of itself is already a challenge i think today though this look because it's so simple it doesn't need a wing so i'm just strictly going to do this line here maybe like a little baby one Oh, she's cute. That's a cute little wing. Oh, she's cute. Yum. We love her. All right, I'm going to do that to the other eye. Just don't stab yourself. Don't stab yourself in the eye. Oh, don't stab yourself in the eye. starting to get bigger it's still little for me we're still good we still got some cute lines okay that's that last but certainly not least mascara take your absolute time with this it's big okay you want to do about two coats of mascara you want to start with the top lashes first and kind of comb it comb it and shimmy it back and forth that's how you're going to coat the lashes basically evenly okay I like doing the top lashes on both eyes first. And then I'll go in a little bit more. Bottom. Bottom, you, you don't want to go all the way in. You kind of want to stop. Like, go from the outer corner in to about halfway. Because then it keeps your eyes opened up. <gasps> no. Sometimes this happens, that's okay, you let it dry, and then you can scrape it off, like legitimately, and it's not going to ruin anything. Then with the tip of the mascara, just kind of like pick off the end of it, and you can run it through just to add a little more product to those lashes there. Go ahead and give your top lashes a second coat. A little bit of concealer will always help. Actually, I think I'm going to do this for both sides anyways, just to really sharpen that edge of the look here that we're doing. Right underneath the liner, it's going to just kind of make it pop a bit more. And this is the look all complete. Hopefully you enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for weekly videos and hit that notification bell so you know when I post a brand new video because if you don't, how else are you going to know? You won't, so do it. Hopefully you found this informative. Hopefully you learned some tips and tricks to help you along your makeup journey and hopefully you come back because I've got lots more content coming your way very soon. I will see everyone on Monday with a brand new movie Monday video. But until then, Goodbye, friendships.